Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Can you hear me? Good morning, Andres. Welcome. Welcome to our third Ventiso and Avial Mac webinar. Ventiso is Venezuela teachers of English to speakers of other languages. And Avial Mac stands for Asociación Venezolana para la Enseñanza y el Aprendizaje de Lenguas Mediados por el Computador. We are in association to present a webinar today. Um, our guest speaker is Andres Ramos. He's going to present MEMS. And um, I hope you're OK. It's 10 o'clock local time in Venezuela. This is Evelyn Izquierdo speaking from Caracas. Welcome, everybody. Let's uh, check the audio settings with Andres. Are you ready? OK, now let's try. First, the write-in control. Welcome, everybody. Great. Now let's see. Let's try audio. And you may say hello to the audience. And then we go to the camera setting, OK? Hi, Julio. Uh, Welcome. OK. Hello, hello, Sylvia, Gabby, Alejandra, Thomas, Julio. Hey, how's, how's uh, uh, Eastern Coast, Julio, Manuel? And of course, Evelyn. much it's working okay now let's check the camera I'm going to turn my camera off or maybe we can try both just in case let's see if we have more a broke band than a narrow band hi everybody okay good check great to see you I see you perfectly okay no, nowhere to hide. <laughs> Hello, Gabby. Okay. Well, uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Andres Ramos. Andres uh, has been working uh, with Ventiso for many years as a volunteer. He's uh, uh, helping us in many, many things, and we are really happy to have him here today. Um, Andres joined the ELT community in 1991 while pursuing graduate studies in oil policies at Universidad Central de Venezuela, which is my university too. He underwent teacher training and development in Caracas during his teaching training and management in divorce at language schools he developed materials on methodology as an academic consultant for Macmillan and this serves schools universities language academies and ESO associations through passion for research and shared experiences with Macmillan users he finds ever-changing ways to assist teachers through workshops and seminars on instructional strategies and trends. I'm going to cite some uh, uh, words that he stands like a shift in career path towards ELT helped me build such life skills as creativity and research. These skills feed my childlike curiosity and desire to try new ways of doing things. 
nurtured by sources in both the physical and digital realms. I've found myself to be a blended learner. That's Andres Ramos, and it's a real pleasure to have him today. Welcome again, Andres. The floor is yours. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank uh, Ventiso and uh, Avialmec for this opportunity to uh, uh, share this uh, uh, conversation and exchange of ideas with you people. And I can see that everybody here so far is from the Americas. So good morning, everybody. I can see Gabby from Minnesota and Thomas, who resides in Valencia. Uh, Manuela, Emmanuel, Julio, I, I can see people from Ciudad uh, Ojeda, of course. Jose from Eastern Venezuela, Monagas. Ah, okay, not Ciudad Ojeda, Cabima, <laughs> right. And of course, Nair. So good, and Andre, and Alejandra, and Silvia. So good to have you here. And of course, for us, it means as um, a, a cultural phenomenon, something that could be perhaps a little crazy or frivolous but that uh, has a lot of seriousness, a lot of seriousness uh, lies within it, and we will see it. Why? Because it is culture. It is part of our authentic discourse. But thanks to human wit, it can be fun, and it can also be used in the classroom. Okay? <laughs> thank you for the waves. Okay. And thank you for, for, for waving. Just... Uh, um, a few words so that, let, let's say that these are like the pre-flight instructions and this is a safety drill at this moment. In this case, what we will do is the following. Um, for those of you who know me in Venezuela, it, it is ethical to state that I'm acting in my personal and professional capacity because uh, regardless of school, the university, the publishing company speakers work at, Ben Tissol and I, understand that an ELT professional's role stretches beyond a job or institutional affiliation, institutional affiliation so that we can serve the whole ELT community and collaborate among colleagues. Uh, I'll be using a lot of uh, images that come from different authorship, but I'm not infringing any copyrights because this is an educational and cultural session. All the sources that you will see are referenced. Of course, I also contribute visual and text content in this uh, activity. It's a companion presentation, and the session are available to you under Creative Commons 4.0. OK, once I've disclosed that, you know, for all legal purposes, the love. Uh, OK, the, the, um, the chatbots will be open throughout the whole session. Uh, hi, Judith. Good to see you. Uh, and again, we continue to see people from the Americas, in this case, Judith from, from Jamaica. And I'd like you to tell me, or I'd like you to share with us, via, all of us, via chat, if these pictures ring any bells on you. Okay. You can say who these people or characters are. You can type that. You can type their famous lines, as you remember them because they are the usual suspects in memes. Okay, of course, we've got Brittany. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, people, of course. All, all, all the pop singers first. You people are so telling. Okay, yes, we've got, uh, thank you, Nair, the, the, the astrophysics scientist. In this case, we're talking about uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh-huh. And the little old guy, you know, on top. He's the one who says, no, I won't say his line, so somebody remembers. Maybe, maybe Gabby can tell us, Gabby Wallace from, from Minnesota, because she will surely know about him. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, let me contribute, of course. So this is Neil deGrasse Tyson, and don't worry, <laughs> this little old guy on top. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, that, that he, we, you've seen his documentaries on Discovery Channel. Okay, we're talking about, um, in this case, about Wilford Brimley, and he was, uh, he, he, he was in a, in a television series in the 90s, oh, I'm telling my age, named My House, but he was also very famous for 
an insurance company commercial where he mispronounced diabetes. <laughs> so, of course, you know that Neil deGrasse Tyson says, watch out guys, we're dealing with somebody conflicted. And, uh, of course, with Britney Spears, it's like, you got to work, female dog. You know the word she uses. And, of course, let's remember that Pitbull is bilingual, bicultural, uh, Cuban-American. So, his, one of his famous lines is, uno, do, pronounced that way, tre, without final S, cuatro, dale. Uh, yes, I know that we see this very frivolous, but... There are many cultural and linguistic features here that we can exploit in the classroom. And now, let me show you all the kinds of memes that you also find all over the world and all around the Internet. Okay, close-up memes like this. Aha, Gabby, maybe a little help from you there. This girl, oh my god. Okay, thank you for sharing his uh, biography on Wikipedia, uh, Naid. Oh, my God. Okay, who's this girl? Where's this character from? Yes, exactly, friends. Janice, the, off and off, the on and off uh, girlfriend of Chandler's. Exactly. And do you remember who's this guy who says, yeah, like that? Okay, we're talking about a, a, an Olympic swimmer, a gold medalist, and of course everybody knows Grumpy Cat. So, the Oh My God girl from France, Janice Littman was the character's name, and around like this, yeah, Grumpy Cat, cool sub memes, and now there are flow chart memes. Incredible. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. She is partnering with us as, 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 as a, a member of uh, Avea and Make. Now, in this case, let's state for serious purposes our aims here. For the following minutes, we will be aiming at reviewing concepts related to memes and exploring their cultural and linguistic value, at re also at reflecting ELT strategies for memes so that we can use them in the classroom uh, we will also be commenting sample means for educational use, and uh, everybody will be participating in the chatbots a lot, and also with ML Tykins, et cetera, with all the tools, because we will be engaging in three practices with these means. That said, WTF, a, 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 don't get me wrong, what the facts, that's what I mean, what the facts are meme. Okay, let's see. Uh huh. I'm also got Victor. In this case, meme has to do with mime, with mimics, with mime because it comes from Greek, from the Greek word minima, which means a imitated thing. According to Dawkins, a meme, a, 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 a meme conveys the idea of a unit of cultural transmission. It is not just a linguistic unit. It is not just a speech unit. It is not a unit of meaning. It has a verbal layers. It has a visual layers. It has artistic layers. It has a social layers because those layers compose one single unit of cultural transmission. And it is imitated. This is why it is called meaning. And that piece of thought is copied from person to person according to Wilkins. Okay, with that brief definition, excuse me, <coughs> okay, so are they just aphorisms or idioms or rhymes or chants or uh, uh, primary source content? No, they're all of it and a lot more, and this is what we'll be seeing in a few minutes. This is the first meme that I would like us all to check out, of course. I don't know if T.C. Hale is the teacher or T.C. Hale is the student. Regardless, in this case, the question is, Bob has 36 candy bars, he eats 29, what does he have now? Of course, from the arithmetical point of view, he failed if he gives this answer. But semantically, a person can develop diabetes after eating so many candy bars. So, one word, diabetes. Now, what, that, that is, you know, like the joking part or, or, or the funny part. Now, 
getting a little more serious, I would like us all to discover what use, do you find, what communicative functions you grasp in this meme. What um, um, semantic fields do you see represented? Which lexical units can you find? And what can you tell me about the sounds and the phonetics here? And any findings you, you, you have, please share them in the chat box. Of course, okay, as for top, as for um, uh, semantic fields and meaning, we've got math and numbers, and that takes us to which communicative function if we have to do. Okay, storytelling, perhaps, but if we stretch, stretch it a little. Okay, when you deal with numbers and communicate numbers in arithmetical operations, what function is that? Of course, it is a math test that is uh, authentic. What, what communicative function are we talking about here? Or what lexical units do you see reflected here or used here, according to Lewis? That's what I mean. Okay, let's help that reflection a little. And, for example, this is what I see. As communicative functions, we have counting or expressing possession. Somebody has these many bars. Or talking about health because uh, uh, Wilfred Brimley tell us about diabetes. For a meaning, you've got food, or the sense of taste, quantities, and math versus disease. Those are the lexical, uh, are the, the meaning for the, the um, semantic fields. Exactly, because okay, eating a lot of chocolate bars can cause a disease. That's right, Jose Angel. Now, for lexical units, we have discourse markers such as the title, in this case, you've got the title, you've got a number, and they mark the scores, of course. Now, you've also got, use this color better, um, uh, you've also got a collocation, candy bar, we don't use, you usually, usually wouldn't say a, car, a, 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 a bar of candy. And we've also got one word, which is, in order to sum up something, an institutionalized utterance. Besides, for sounds, we find that our friend here is showing his vowel shifts depending on the, uh, okay, Okay, exactly. This is why this fluent, thank you, Thomas, this fluent native speaker is saying something that might sound or might look like mispronunciation, diabetes, but it is not the mispronunciation. He is being a fluent native speaker using the vowel shift of his specific dialect. Thank you for pointing that out because it's on the same page. We're on the same page. Now, Moving on, this, if, if I'm going to be self-deprecating, if I'm going to be self-deprecating about pronunciation, may I be self-deprecating about Spanish speakers learning English, because I am a Latino. Now, in this case, you find a lot of transliteration here, because this girl is saying, in what may sound as mispronunciation to some people, ah, I dream I speak in perfect English and become a very famous movie estar. That way. She's very fluent, and she speaks like a non-native. But the thing is that this girl is not being diligent about it. And this is why Brittany says, you got to work. Okay. What is the problem with the expression, you got to work, work it, or make it work, for you native speakers? Does it only refer to legitimate endeavors, or does it also refer to questionable behavior? We can also discover communicative use here. Exactly, Thomas. But the problem is that native speakers know that. Biculturals know that. And we need to expose students to this, not because of uh, 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 Miss Brittany's cleavage, but because it is necessary for them to understand when the expression, you got to work, can be correct or offensive. Exactly, cultural competence. 
Perhaps I'm talking to a grandmother and I say, you got to work, and that lady may be offended. Okay? With that in mind, we have, uh, uh, as for communicative use, we have hopes and dreams and talking about obligation and necessity. Uh, lexical units that are reflected here. You have multi-words, for example. You have uh, collocations. And you also have a, an institutionalized utterance here. And sounds, this is a way for non-native speakers to become aware of uh, certain pronunciation features they need to work on. Certain other sounds they need to incorporate that are different from their phonetical system. Okay, that's only reflection. We'll be practicing in a minute. You may ask me, Andres, that's nice and beautiful, but how can I make it happen in the classroom? Okay, this is we'll be working on this. In this case, every time you see these blue boxes, they'll have as a title a statement of the level and certain ELT initials coming from the Common European Framework or ELT specialties, such as academic purposes or specific purposes. What you will see in these boxes are procedures, one, two, three, four steps that you can use in the classroom. Also, suggestions of strategies for language areas, language systems, what I can do with this mean for vocabulary, for grammar, for pronunciation. Suggestions to make it relevant in both cultures, the original culture and the student's culture. And ideas for production, for speaking and writing and transferring discourse to students using the means. For example, for an elementary level, okay, perhaps an A1 or A2 according to your common European framework, we can find a meme in real examples. We can pre-select it for students. Then we can help them with very simple questions and steps and scaffolding, help them discover meaning or purpose. We can help them come with other contexts and use this for writing, and we're approaching the practical part. Everybody will be collaborating in a minute. Okay, this is original. This is taken from Cheeseburger, and uh, this is, of course, a very blunt and brazen cat saying, stating, sit down, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I ate your hamster this morning. Okay, so this is what we will do. Let's practice it in our context. Imagine in your daily lives news that you may wish. Okay, this is a moment for venting, by the way. A, a, a moment for fantasizing. Perhaps you would like to deliver somebody a very, very, very serious news in a brazen, blunt fashion. So what I will ask you to do after I type once upon a time is please type possible bad news that you want to give brazenly and bluntly like our cat does. For example, darling, once upon a time I withdrew all my 401k, my pension fund, and blew it in Vegas. That kind of bad news. Please give me some. Give me some. Type them in the chat, in the chat box. And I'll select a couple uh, so that uh, I can paste them onto, onto our joint practice. Okay? Aha. Uh -huh. I was thinking of having a great day, according to Evelyn, but there was a mouse bugging me. And then, okay, she kept the mouse eating context. You can think of any other context. Maybe you would like to disclose to a relative that you are taking things away from them, that you are that you crashed the car, that kind of thing too. <laughs> there was a bug okay, there was a, a mouse bugging me. Okay. For example, I I I I blew out my four uh, one K in Vegas. Okay, once upon a time, there was a sneaky cat. Everybody kept the cat context. Good, but... 
Okay, there was a sneaky cat who stole all the cookies. Aha, and we can practice others, and on, and on, and on. Of course, we are doing this impromptu. You give students your instructions. You allow them to come up with ideas, and they can prepare their own. Okay, a poor little, uh, uh, and put little blame, da, 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 da. Okay, thank you so much. That would be the idea. You can come up with other contexts that are taken from an original meme. That said, we move on to our next activity. In this case, you can also use memes, or you can recompose memes with uh, uh, um, different uh, means. In this case, you can address social issues that are relevant, and you can trigger commentary in the classroom. My best wishes to Rachel Fredrickson, who lost all this weight at the last season of The Biggest Loser, but of course, she left even other trainers and coaches aghast, like what happened to Bob and Jillian when they looked at her. In this case, we are addressing fitness, which is something that everybody aims at in society, and you know, child obesity, and all these programs, and other countries, etc. Now, can too much of a good thing go bad? And you can have your students talk about it, express their feelings, give them input, give them more vocabulary so that they can address those issues. Okay, for example, in our societies, we strive for health, but we also strive for beauty. Can too much of beauty go wrong? Well, you can ask uh, Melanie Griffith, for example. <laughs> yes, she's fit. And I won't criticize, it's perfect, because I also lost weight some time ago, and some other people can vouch for how healthy that is. Now, can too much of plastic surgery go wrong? And your students can give their opinions and discuss. And you can also help students that have self-image problems and let them understand that no matter their body types and complexion, they are beautiful and they can uh, uh, think well about them, feel well about themselves. And in this case, is too much of mental health Good, and can it go wrong, like what happened here with the grumpy cat for having Prozac? You can also address that kind of subjects and issues, because it is important in the classroom. Because that is what, let's remember that when we make a discussion and commentary relevant in the classroom, being it part of a syllabus and using our textbooks and other resources, et cetera, of course, in within that frame, you trigger students' interest, and you can use motivation for them to develop language skills. And you can also help them develop thinking processes, because this is a before picture. This is an after picture that is a criterion. And you can address issues that may be appropriate, appropriate for certain audiences. That is important. OK. And I just wanted to show you that example and let you comment on that. OK, that could be with intermediate students. That's right, Jose. OK. <laughs> yes, grumpy on, 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 on Prozac. OK, now let's go to intermediate students. You can make them aware of these are strategies that you can use in the classroom. You can make them aware of meaning, function, through wordplay or lexical sets, like the scores markers, or sounds, or rights. You can ask your students to explain the meme or find the cultural origin, and you can make other locally meaningful memes from the one that you people have studied in the classroom. That said, these are some English language teaching criteria that we can apply to an original meme that we find so that we can reflect upon it and decide how fit, how suitable it is for our classroom level, target students, and second language acquisition processes, graded tests, and strategies that you can borrow from English 
for academic purposes. In this case, for example, okay. <laughs> yes, talking about plastic surgery, the Countess of Alba. Okay, Cayetana. Now, in this case, you have this famous prayer, which is in three parts. God, give me patience. And somebody changed it in, in pray to God Almighty, because if you give me strength, I will kill them. Okay, now, for which levels of students, and you can type that in the chat box, would you use this kind of meme? <laughs> I agree, Evelyn. I think so. Okay. Uh, can you use this for elementary students or intermediate students? Can you, use this, can you use this with children, with teens, with adults? Okay. Maybe, okay, with what kind of professionals would you use this? Okay. Maybe with human resource, because they have to work in team, and sometimes I feel like killing somebody. Okay, about second uh, language acquisition processes, okay, you've got here cohesion because God is represented by you afterwards and the one who is praying is represented by me and I, okay? You can also make your students aware of the conditional clauses, cause clauses, and imperatives. Now, for graded tests, you can do several things. For example, this is a threefold. Uh, this is <laughs> okay. Uh, perhaps, perhaps yes. You, we need patience because if we go to a government agency, we are so bureaucratic in this. Almost everywhere in the world, and we are strong enough, we feel like killing them. But to keep peace and coexistence. You can ask your students to become aware of the imperative, to become, to, to, you can ask them to modify this with other model auxiliaries, I may kill them, I must kill them, I could kill them, etc. Or, for example, you can ask your students to find the origin of this. Okay, this is a three or the other three parts of the prayer. Give me patience is one of the requests. What is the other request in this prayer? In the original prayer, give me strength, of course. And what is the other one? Give me, aha, uh -huh. what is the other one? Give me patience, give me strength. And what is the other give me in this famous prayer? So that we can tell the difference? Give me wisdom. And usually, Alcoholics Anonymous pray this prayer. Yes, give me wisdom. Or you can also have students write a little composition on this or similar means with the other genes. God give me strength. God give me wisdom. Give me wisdom because I'm taking the test tomorrow, for example. Okay, those are criteria. Those criteria to this meme for an intermediate level of English. Okay, what demographic of students can use this? Yes, you can make a composition with a functional purpose. Thank you, Nate. Okay, let's analyze the target students, the second language acquisition processes, and what possible tests, because we will be doing something practical with this, that we can have with this meme. What students, what love, what, what ages or demographics of students this, uh, uh, could this be suitable for? And you can, uh, you can reply via chat box. Okay, for Spanish speakers, uh, for Latino speakers in the States who we'll have English as a second language, for, uh, although he states that he is Mr. Worldwide, okay, for uh, uh, Spanish speakers throughout Latin America, mostly for high school. Okay. Exactly. Because this is pretty Latin American, but we have some spaghetti Western, and Westerns are more universal. Okay, or for example, you can take a famous Western African singer and replace Pitbull for him. Okay, yes, that's one of his famous lines. He dubs himself uh, Mr. Worldwide. Okay, now, 
Let's suppose that you replace this for another pop icon in, an, in other regions of the world. But in this case, he is very aspirational. He says, or states, from the streets of Miami, Miami to presenting at the Grammys. And then he goes all bilingual and switches codes. Guess who's el lobo me la como? Talking about second language acquisition processes, what are the rhymes here? We have rhymes both in English and in Spanish. Of course, we've got Miami and the Grammys. we got Lavo and Como. Okay. You can also help students understand for function, this is life aims. Stating my progress in life. He's very aspirational. From humble beginnings, from rags, to success, to riches. Okay? And in this case, and you can find this useful elsewhere in the world with non-native speakers. You know that sometimes they wrongly recognize um, the phonetical aspects of uh, of uh, uh, something that is uttered in English. In this case, the right movie line is make my day. But this character thinks it reads or, or it sounds coman mame. This is so that you can help students go through interlanguage and understand first language interference. Okay, now let's practice together. In this case, this is what we will do. Let's go to a from to situation. Please uh, type in a humble beginning. It could be geographical, it could be life standard, and I will include your contribution in the from and to speech bubble. Okay, maybe from the slums, from the ghetto, Okay, from junk food, thank you, Julio. From junk food, because in this case he's talking about fitness. Okay, from junk food to what? Anybody else can give ideas. Okay, to healthy food, to healthy eating. Uh-huh. Feeling good. Okay. Now we can use some of uh, Pitbull's famous lines. I became Mr. Worldwide. Now, in this case, he is given a reply in disbelief by this Spaghetti Western character. Can you remember a famous movie line? In this case, it was uh, uh, Dirty Harry's uh, uh, Make My Day. But what others can you think of? Maybe Hasta La Vista Baby or others. For example, from Terminator, Beside Hasta La Vista Baby, what is another famous movie line of his that many people remember. Or maybe from, a, I'll be back. Thank you, Alejandra. Now, what happens is this. I'll be back. Huh? Okay, I'll be back. Bye. Austrian, American, Schwarzenegger. Now, what happens with I'll be back? What thing, what expression do you think that Spanish speakers or speakers of other languages make mistake I'll be back for? Okay. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> That's from another movie. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. That's a good one. Okay. In this case, Aha, uh -huh. I wish thank you very much. 
Victor. I like that one. I dije, meaning there's some steak. Some beef steak to eat, of course. So, I dije, and students can understand the importance of developing very, very good listening, recognition, and discrimination skills. So, it is not Adistec, it is, no, it's, I'll be back. This is another practical example that we can have in the classroom. And thank you for participating. Now let's move on. In this case, some people, maybe native speakers can say, okay, this is misspelled. Hell no. But why is it purposely and purposefully misspelled? Because they are referring to the authentic brand. I mean, there's nothing more contradictory than thinking that poor Mr. Grumpy Cat, by the way, who's a real cat, he was bo it was born in, in, in 2012 in Arizona, and its real name is uh, Tata Sauce, and uh, it's been featured in uh, 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 the Anderson Cooper show, but besides, you know, the, the origin, in this case, Hello Kitty is a brand. Hello Kitty is very cute. This Japanese cat, a, a cartoon cat, is very cute, and definitely this doesn't look any cute at all. You can help students understand the expression, hell no, the need for the space, and also related to the brand, because memes are culture rich. Now, moving on to what we could do, for example, for advanced learners. Okay, they can figure out context from an isolated meme, what they mean in isolation and not its origin. They can search for the historical or documentary source where they came from, who the author was, what was the real situation. They can explain the cultural implications, why it was written, what purpose did it serve in society back then. Uh, students can elaborate being advanced, maybe with a presentation or an essay on the lexis, the semantics, the function, the syntax, the phonetics. They can practice super segmentals, they can practice stress, rhythm, intonation, or dialect. They can write an essay, and they can find equivalence in the first language. They can work on ambiguity, thank you, Nayud, that's important, and you can take speaking and written production a step further, they can video a story or they can post a story with several memes and make it viral in any kind of social media group that you use for them or with them in the classroom. That's it. Let's analyze this one. I know that most of you know the historical background of this, but in this case, let's practice it per se, in isolation, yes, they can be given a functional purpose so that they can write an essay. Thank you, Nate. Now, what if I want to, because we know that the original poster is keep calm, but what if I don't want to keep calm? Can you tell me, people, can you share with all of us via chat legitimate reasons not to keep calm in life? When is it good not to be laid back, but to get mad at something. Okay, well, that was the original context. Uh, okay. Aha, uh -huh. the natural rebellion. The original poster had to do with a situation at war, exactly. Okay, in this case, I will delete this one, and I will type another one here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What happened? Okay. Question, people. Can you see the, the PowerPoint presentation? Because I cannot on my end of the communication. Okay. Okay. Evelyn, would you give us a hand here? I mean, I know my content, and I, can, I know how to... Close. 
Okay. Okay, we are being given another whiteboard. Uh -huh. Okay, here it comes again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Slide one. Let's go fast to the one I was working on. Thank you for refreshing it, uh, Evelyn. An excellent moderator. Would you please give a round of applause to Evelyn and Nair? <laughs> thank you so much for such prompt and swift assistance. Okay. Again, let's go back to legitimate situations in life where we shouldn't keep calm. Come on, people. Come on, people. I know that you can tell me. I know that you can tell me. When is it good to get mad at, eh, 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 well, at war? That's important, Beth. Okay. When else do you think it's important to get mad? Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Traffic jams. Thank you, Beth. Okay, so what if, okay, elaborating on or building on, on, on Beth's example, what if I don't want to keep calm? at this stupid traffic jam. And thank you very much for contributing it. Okay. And we're going to keep this one for all of us to use. And could you please type some others on chat? Okay. What if I don't want to keep calm at this situation, in this situation? Would you type some others, please, for all of us to have a laugh? Now, doing this implies a lot of cultural discernment and also linguistic competences. It is not that obvious. So this is good for upper intermediate. Aha. Uh -huh. What if I don't want to keep calm at this fire? What if I want to keep calm at this noisy class, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. Now, what if I don't want to keep calm for waiting in line for toilet paper in Venezuela? Thank you, Palma. Needless to elaborate, we're in a very neutral. <laughs> I've been given the warning, you know. Okay. Now, this is the historical background of this poster. I know we know it. Most of us here, I know you as teachers and because of your background or your descent, I know that you know this, you, but you can ask students to find the historical background and also to talk about the implications in this case, this, what, what, what were the implications at war, what was going on in the UK at that moment. What threats were they under? Those were the implications. Now, uh, and later I can share you know the, the link. Now, also for in, uh, with English for uh, uh, specific purposes and academic purposes, you can take uh, techniques that stem from these specialties and use them for means. Workplay, because alliteration for example, brazenly, bluntly delivered bad news. But, 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 but you have a lot of alliteration there. Alliteration and fun help focus on meaning, and that's good for semantics. Rhyme. You can use rhyme because sounds maximize brevity and vocal. You can communicate a lot in very in a very little time frame and space frame using rhyme. Spelling like the hell no kitty poster, because you can use apparent misspelling and transliteration so that you, they can understand the original idiom and the contradiction. False etymology, the one that we used with the spaghetti western character watcher who did not understand the movie line. Homophony, because words, more words are learned that sound the same, but the difference is in meaning and spelling are discerned. You can also take techniques from advertising, from communications, from mods, from psychology, and also from other careers. For example, Gantt diagrams and flowcharts from engineering and standards and procedures. Now, that said, 
in this case, and as the final illustration, I know that this looks pretty frivolous. A tweet by Ryan Lochte stating that he's having a special day on his birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is that he wanted to trademark the expression. That expression had already been taken. It was the name of a web hosting company incorporated in 2002. Mm -hmm. As fit as, exactly, Thomas. And in this case, in order for him to apply for the trademark, to submit the trademark, he had to negotiate with these people because they sent him a cease and desist letter. Now, this is taken from his reality show. What would Ryan Lochte do? And, of course, this is pretty much pop culture and cable TV, etc. But this can trigger a discussion on law and business, and we can have our business students, our law students, our MBA students that are perfecting their English, find out in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office when he submitted it, if he was granted permission to use the brand for merchandising, who his attorney at the law is, and what were the important landmarks. So, something as apparently stupid as this, this can trigger a whole discussion for graduate business students at an MBA or attorneys at law who are perfecting their English so that they can discuss, so that they can debate on these implications. Oh, okay. Anybody else having trouble hearing me or is it only Judith? Okay. Thank you so much. What if you refresh or what if you um, uh, deactivate any other applications consuming broadband uh, uh, in your computer, Judith, that can help. Okay, these being the last example, something very frivolous, gone, something very serious and deep and used for graduate learner, for graduate learners, let me tell you where you can also find other references of memes and you can download memes for your use in classroom. You can go to Cheeseburger and it's meme base. You can also go to Meme Creator, you can go to Meme Center, or you can go to my Pinterest account. I have two memes boards. By the way, just a word of caution. I, I, ex I fully exert my First Amendment rights of free speech, and I, and I post memes on anything, and also including situations in Venezuela. Okay, in this case, you can also, so that you can have ideas of what's trending, what is going on, what's the buzz in pop culture, you can check videos on Vine. Thank you for the Urban Dictionary so that you can, and even Urban Dictionary itself, because you may find an expression. Thank you, Thomas. Now, the problem with that expression is that you need to know the meaning defined by someone, and people collaborate on, on Urban Dictionary, and they define, and they define things. Okay. Thank you so much, by the way. You can follow trends and spot trends on Vine, on e entertainment television for teenagers, on MTV or young adults, VH1, and also on Instagram. And now, as a final example, uploading a video and playing a video in Never Band Venezuela would have been a problem. So, this video will be live because we will walk to an example of how students can produce further using this. And this will feature both Evelyn Izquierdo and yours truly. Take it away. <laughs> Keep calm and carry on. Yeah, right. As it, if nothing happened, hmm. Or perhaps, Keep calm and live the ventisal spirit. No way. Our spirit is active, exultant, powering. 
Okay, what if I don't want to keep calm? Because I'm not calm, not at all. This is a legitimate situation to be well done. The next event is so 24, uh, 2014, uh, the, the uh, uh, National Convention, it is our 32nd National Convention. I'm well done it because we can examine our practice, support each other, and renew our hopes for the profession and the trade. And that is ELT for the next generation. I want to be there. I hope that you will be there if uh, the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, workshops at the convention are also joined by some online activity. Please participate from somewhere else around the world, from elsewhere around the world. And I thank you so much for participating, for uh, practicing with me, for contributing ideas and links, etc. For example, you want to know a little more about uh, Wilford Brimley, who he is, what his commercial was, etc. This is the origin. Of course, it is not first source. It is referential source, referential source from uh, Wikipedia. Okay, Nair contributed this before, and I will type it again. This is for Neil deGrasse Tyson. And uh, you can also find the handout, so to speak, the summary for this talk, for this webinar, as one of my pictures, one of my pins on Pinterest. And you can also follow me from there. Speaking of which, I am present in different social media. I won't inconvenience you with so many addresses, but I can share at Andres Ramos VE on Twitter. Andres no e Andres Ramos on SlideShare or Andres Ramos be on Pinterest because you have links that redirect you to my other social media on Facebook on my YouTube channel that I'm still building uh, and also on uh, Google Plus. Okay, so friends, I hope that this will have given you a glimpse at the linguistical, linguistic and cultural aspects of the series. Uh-huh. Okay. In this case, yes, what's going to happen on WizIQ, and uh, Evelyn Izquierdo can tell you, is that you people can access this, uh, the video of this webinar anytime you need to revisit it. And thank you so much for all your participation. Over to you, Evelyn. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andres. It's been wonderful. I knew it was going to be that way. It's so interesting. And thank you very much for all the ideas you've given us uh, on how to use memes in, in the ELT area. It's fantastic. We can use it for many, many purposes. It's not only for um, storytelling, but for pronunciation and for alliteration, uh, coherence, and so on. So it has many uses in the ELT field. So thank you very much. Um, it's been great to have you today, and it's also been fun. <laughs> You've been amazing. Uh, all people who are interested in the recording, well, it will be available in about an hour or so. Um, just come back and use the same uh, class link you used to join us. And, uh, well, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, um, Andres, again. And I want to invite you all to uh, participate in our upcoming um convention in July. It will be on July the the 18th and 19th, if I'm not wrong. It's Friday and and Saturday at Universidad Católica Andrés Bello. Uh, we're also planning to have some other webinars. Well, let's uh, cross our fingers. Uh, we hope we can make it. And um, there will be an extension for sending proposals. If you want to participate as a as a speaker, uh, as a presenter, well, just send us your proposal and your 
um, registration fee will be free. So just work on that. Thank you very much, everybody, again, for your participation. Uh, we have another uh, presentation next um, next Saturday with Marina Majonica uh, at the same time, 10 o'clock Venezuela time, uh, 14.30 GMT. You're all welcome again. And if you have any um, final words, uh, we can say goodbye in this. Uh, just one minute left. You may also leave your comments on the chat. Thank you very much, and bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for participating. It's been a privilege to serve the EOT community. And thanks to Ventis and Avea Mech for organizing and hosting these webinars. Thank you, Nair, for helping us in the chat. Uh, thank you all, uh, Ventiso uh, and Avial Mac people for supporting us today uh, with the uh, tech fans. I'll see you next Saturday at the same time, 10 o'clock Venezuela time and 14.30 GMT with Marina Majonica. Bye-bye, Alejandra. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Nair. Thank you, um, Manuel, Tomas, Jose, Victor, Dario, Rosa, Mariela, Judith. And welcome, Miguel. We're just ending the webinar, but you may see the, the recording. Well, bye-bye, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.